Mineral Nutrition The basic needs of all living organisms are essentially the same. They require macromolecules such as carbohydrates, proteins and fats and water and minerals for their growth and development. This chapter focuses mainly on inorganic plant nutrition wherein you will study the methods to identify elements essential to growth and development of plants and the criteria for establishing the essentiality. You will also study the role of essential elements, their major deficiency, symptoms and the mechanism of absorption of these essential elements. The chapter also introduces you briefly to the significance and the mechanism of biological nitrogen fixation. Methods to study the mineral requirements of the plant. In 1860, Julius von Sachs, a prominent German botanist, demonstrated for the first time the plants could be grown to maturity in a defined nutrient solution in complete absence of soil. This technique of growing plants in a nutrient solution is known as hydrophonics. Since then, a number of improvised methods have been employed to try and determine the mineral nutrients essential for plants. The essence of all these methods involves the culture of plants in a soil-free defined mineral solution. These methods require purified water and mineral nutrient salts. Can you explain why is this so essential? After a series of experiments in which the roots of the plants were immersed in nutrient solution and wherein an element was added, substituted, removed or given in varied concentration, a mineral suitable for the plant growth was obtained. By this method, essential elements were identified and their deficiency symptoms discovered. Hydrophonics has been successfully employed as a technique for the commercial production of vegetables such as tomato, seedless cucumber and lattice, lettuce. It must be emphasized that the nutrient solutions must be adequately aerated to obtain the optimum growth. What would happen if solutions were poorly aerated? Diagrammatic views of hydrophonic technique is given in figure 12.1 and 12.2. Essential Mineral Elements Most of the minerals present in the soil can enter plants through roots. In fact, more than 60 elements of the 105 discovered so far are found in different plants. Some plant species accumulate selenium, some others gold, while some plants growing near nuclear test sites take up radioactive strontium. There are techniques that are able to detect the minerals even at very low concentration, that is 10 raised to minus 8 gram per ml. The question is whether all the diverse mineral elements present in a plant, for example gold and selenium as mentioned above, are really necessary for plants? How do we decide what is essential for plants and what is not? Criteria for Essentiality The criteria for essentiality of an element are given below. The element must be absolutely necessary for supporting normal growth and reproduction. In the absence of the elements, the plant do not complete their life cycle or set the seeds. The requirement of the element must be specific and not replaceable by another element. In other words, deficiency of any one element cannot be met by supplying some other element. The element must be directly involved in the metabolism of the plant. Based upon the above criteria, only a few elements have been found to be absolutely essential for plant growth and metabolism. These plants are further divided into two broad categories based on their quantitative requirements, macronutrients and micronutrients.
Macronutrients are generally present in plant tissues in large amounts in excess of 10 millimole per kg of dry matter. The macronutrients include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, potassium, calcium and magnesium. Of these, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen are mainly obtained from carbon dioxide and water while the others are absorbed from the soil as mineral nutrition. Micronutrients or trace elements are needed in very small amounts less than 10 millimole per kg of dry matter. These include iron, manganese, copper, molybdenum, zinc, boron, chlorine and nickel. In addition to the 17 essential elements named above, there are some beneficial elements such as sodium, silicon, cobalt and selenium. They are required by higher plants. Essential elements can also be grouped into four broad categories on the basis of their diverse functions. These categories are essential elements as components of biomolecules and hence structural elements of cells. Example, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Essential elements that are components of energy related chemical compounds in plants Example, magnesium in chlorophyll and phosphorus in ATP. Essential elements that activate or inhibit enzymes. For example, Mg2 plus is an activator for both ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase and phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase, both of which are critical enzymes in photosynthetic carbon fixation. Zinc 2 plus is an activator of alcohol dehydrogenase and molybdenum of nitrogenase during nitrogen metabolism. Can you name a few more elements that fall in this category? For this, you will need to recollect some of the biochemical pathways you have studied earlier. Some essential elements can alter the osmotic potential of a cell. Potassium plays an important role in the opening and closing of stomata. You may recall the role of minerals as solutes in determining the water potential of a cell. Role of macro and micronutrients. Essential elements perform several functions. They participate in various metabolic processes in the plant cells such as permeability of the cell membrane, maintenance of osmotic concentration of cell sap, electron transport systems, buffering action, enzymatic activity and act as major constituents of macromolecules and coenzymes. Various forms and functions of essential nutrient elements are given below. Nitrogen. This is essential nutrient element required by plants in the greatest amount. It is absorbed mainly as NO3 minus, though some are also taken up as NO2 minus or NH4 plus. Nitrogen is required by all parts of a plant, particularly the meristematic tissue and the metabolically active cells. Nitrogen is one of the major constituents of proteins, nucleic acid, vitamins and hormones. Phosphorus. Phosphorus is absorbed by plant from soil in the form of phosphate ions, either as H2PO4- or HPO4-2-. Phosphorus is a constituent of cell membranes, certain proteins, all nucleic acid and nucleotides and is required for all phosphorylation reactions. Potassium. It is absorbed as potassium ion K+. In plants, this is required in more abundant quantities in the meristematic tissues, birds, leaves and root tips. Potassium helps to maintain an anion-cation balance in cell and is involved in protein synthesis. 
opening and closing of stomata, activation of enzymes and in maintenance of turgidity of cells. Calcium Plant absorb calcium from the soil in the form of calcium ions Ca2+. Calcium is required by metastomatic and differentiating tissues. During cell division, it is used in the synthesis of cell wall, particularly as calcium pectate in the middle lamella. It is also needed during the formation of mitotic spindle. It accumulates in the older leaves. It is involved in the normal functioning of cell membrane. It activates certain enzyme and plays an important role in regulating metabolic activities. Magnesium it is absorbed by the plants in the form of divalent Mg2+. It activates the enzyme of respiration, photosynthesis and are involved in the synthesis of DNA and RNA. Magnesium is a constituent of the ring structure of the chlorophyll and helps to maintain the ribosome structure. Sulfur Plants obtain sulfur in the form of sulfate, SO4-2-. Sulfur is present in two amino acids, cysteine and methionine and is the main constituent of several coenzymes, vitamins, thymine, biotin, coenzyme A and pyridoxine. Iron. Plants do not, plants obtain iron in the form of ferric ions, Fe3+. It is required in larger amounts in comparison to other micronutrients. It is an important constituent of proteins involved in the transfer of electrons like ferredoxin and cytochromes. It is reversibly oxidized from Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus during electron transfer. It activates catalase enzyme and is essential for the formation of chlorophyll. Manganese It is absorbed in the form of manganese ion. MN2+. It activates many enzymes involved in photosynthesis, respiration and nitrogen metabolism. The best defined function of manganese is in the splitting of water to liberate oxygen during photosynthesis. Zinc. Plants obtain zinc as Zn2 plus ions. It activates various enzymes especially carboxylases, it is also needed in the synthesis of oxygen. Copper It is absorbed as cupric ions, Cu2+. It is essential for the overall metabolism in the plants. Like iron, it is associated with certain enzymes involved in redox reactions and is reversibly oxidized from Cu plus to Cu2+. Plus. Boron. It is absorbed as BO3-3- or B4O7-2-. Boron is required for the uptake and utilization of calcium 2+. Membrane functioning, pollen germination, cell elongation, cell differentiation and carbohydrate translocation. Molybdenum. Plants obtain it in the form of molybdate ion, MOO2-2+. It is a component of several enzymes including nitrogenase and nitrate reductase, both of which participate in nitrogen metabolism. Chlorine. It is absorbed in the form of chlorine ion, Cl-, along with Na+, and K+, it helps in determining the solute concentration and the anion cation balance in cells. It is essential for the water splitting reaction in a photosynthesis, a reaction that leads to oxygen evolution. Deficiency symptoms of essential elements Whenever the supply of essential elements becomes limited, plant growth is retarded. The concentration of the essential element below which plant growth is retarded is termed as critical concentration. The element is said to be deficient when present below the critical concentration. Since 
each element has one or more specific structural or functional role in plants the absence of any particular element plant shows certain morphological changes these morphological changes are indicative of certain element deficiency and are called deficiency symptoms the deficiency symptoms vary from element to element and they disappear when the deficient mineral nutrient is provided to the plant however if deprivation continues it may eventually lead to the death of the plant the parts of the plant that show the deficiency symptoms also depend on the mobility of the element in the plant for elements that are actively mobilized within the plant and exported to young developing tissues the deficiency symptoms tend to appear first in older tissues for example the deficiency symptoms of nitrogen potassium and magnesium are visible first in senescent leaves in the older leaves biomolecules containing these elements are broken down making these elements available for mobilizing to younger leaves the deficiency symptoms tend to appear first in the young tissues whenever the elements are relatively immobile and are not transported out of mature organs for example elements like sulfur and calcium are part of structural component of the cell and hence are not easily released this aspect of mineral nutrition of plant is of a great significance and importance to agriculture and horticulture the kind of deficiency symptoms shown in plants include chlorosis necrosis stunted plant growth premature fall of leaves and buds and inhibition of cell division chlorosis is the loss of chlorophyll leading to yellowing in leaves the symptom is caused by the deficiency of elements like nitrogen potassium magnesium sulfur iron manganese zinc and molybdenum likewise necrosis or death of tissue particularly leaf tissue is due to the deficiency of calcium magnesium copper potassium lack or low level of nitrogen potassium sulfur molybdenum causes an inhibition of cell division some elements like nitrogen sulfur molybdenum delay flowering in their if their concentration in plant is low you can see from the above that the deficiency of any element can cause multiple symptoms and that the same symptoms may be caused by deficiency of one of several different elements hence to identify the deficient element one has to study all the symptoms developed in all the various parts of the plants and compare them with the available standard tables we must also be aware that different plants also respond differently to the deficiency of the same element toxicity of micronutrients the requirement of micronutrient is always in low amounts while their moderate decreases decrease causes the deficiency symptom and a moderate increase cause toxicity in other words there is a narrow range of concentration at which the elements are optimum any mineral iron concentration in tissues that reduces the dry weight of the tissue by about 10% is considered to be toxic such critical concentration vary widely among different micronutrients the toxicity symptoms are difficult to identify toxicity levels for any element also vary for different plants many a times excess of an element may inhibit the uptake of another element for example the prominent symptom of manganese toxicity is the appearance of brown spots surrounded by chlorotic veins 
It is important to know that manganese competes with iron and magnesium for uptake and with magnesium for binding with enzymes. Manganese also inhibit calcium translocation in shoot apex. Therefore, excess of manganese may in fact induce deficiencies of iron, magnesium and calcium. Thus, what appears as symptoms of manganese toxicity may actually be the deficiency symptoms of iron, magnesium and calcium. Can this knowledge be of some importance to a farmer, a gardener or even for you in your kitchen garden? Mechanism of absorption of elements Much of the studies on mechanism of absorption of elements by plants has been carried out in isolated cells, tissues or organs. These studies reveal that the process of absorption can be demarcated in two main phases. In the first phase, an initial rapid uptake of ions into free space or outer space of the cell, the apoplast is passive. In the second phase of the uptake, the ions are taken in slowly into the inner space, the symplast of the cell. The passive movement of ions into the apoplast usually occurs through ion channels, the transmembrane proteins that function as selective pores. On the other hand, the entry or exit of ions to and from the symplast requires the expenditure of metabolic energy, which is an active process. The movement of ions is usually called flux. The inward movement into cells is influx and the outward movement efflux. You have read the aspects of mineral nutrition nutrient uptake and translocation in plants in the chapter 11. Translocation of solutes Mineral salts are translocated through xylem along with the descending stream of water which is pulled up through the plant by transpirational pull. Analysis of xylem sap shows the presence of mineral salts in it. Use of radioisotopes of mineral elements also substantiate the view that they are transported through the xylem. You have already discussed the movement of water in xylem in chapter 11. Soil as reservoir of essential elements. Majority of the nutrients that are essential for the growth and development of plants become available to the roots due to weathering and breakdown of rocks. These processes enrich the soil with dissolved ions and inorganic salts. Since they are deprived from the rock minerals, their role in plant nutrition is referred to as mineral nutrition. Soil consists of a wide variety of substances. Soil not only supplies minerals but also harbors nitrogen fixing bacteria, other microbes, holds water, supplies air to the roots and act as matrix that stabilizes the plant. Since deficiency of essential minerals affect the crop yield, there is often a need for supplying them through fertilizers, both macronutrients nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, etc. and micronutrients, copper, zinc, iron, manganese, etc. form components of fertilizers and are applied as per need. Metabolism of Nitrogen Nitrogen Cycle Apart from carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, Nitrogen is the most prevalent element in living organisms. Nitrogen is a constituent of amino acids, proteins, hormones, chlorophylls and many of the vitamins. Plants compete with microbes for the limited nitrogen that is available in the soil. Thus, 
nitrogen is the limiting nutrient for both natural and agricultural ecosystem nitrogen exists as two nitrogen atoms joined by a very strong triple bond n triple bond n the process of conversion of nitrogen that is n2 to ammonia is termed as nitrogen fixation in nature lightning and ultraviolet radiation provide enough energy to convert nitrogen to nitrogen oxide no no2 n2o industrial combustions forest fires automobile exhaust and power generating stations are also sources of atmospheric nitrogen oxides decomposition of organic nitrogen of dead plants and animals into ammonia is called ammonification some of this ammonia volatilizes and reenters the atmosphere but most of it is converted into nitrate by soil bacteria in following steps 2 ammonia that is 2nh3 plus 3o2 that is 3 oxygen gas reacts to form 2 no2 minus plus 2h plus plus 2h2o second reaction 2 no2 minus plus o2 gives 2 no3 minus ammonia is the is first oxidized to nitrite by the bacteria nitrosomonas and or nitrococcus the nitrite is further oxidized to nitrate with the help of bacterium nitrobacter these steps are called as nitrification these nitrifying bacteria are called as chemoautotroph the nitrate thus formed is absorbed by the plant and is transported to the leaves in leaves it is reduced to form ammonia that finally forms the amine group of amino acid nitrate present in the soil is also reduced to nitrogen by the process of denitrification denitrification is carried by the bacteria pseudomonas and thiobacillus biological nitrogen fixation very few living organism can utilize the nitrogen in the form of n2 available abundantly in the air only certain prokaryotic species are capable of fixing nitrogen reduction of nitrogen to ammonia by living organism is called as biological nitrogen fixation the enzyme nitrogenase which is capable of nitrogen reduction is present exclusively in prokaryotes such microbes are called as n2 fixers n triple bond n nitrogenase gives ammonia the nitrogen fixing microbes could be free living or symbiotic examples of free living nitrogen fixing aerobic microbes are azotobacter and bezerichia while rhodospirillum is anaerobic and free living in addition a number of cyanobacteria such as anabina and nostoc are also free living nitrogen fixers symbiotic biological nitrogen fixation several types of symbiotic biological nitrogen fixing association are known the most prominent among them is the legume bacteria relationship species of rod shaped rhizobium has such a relationship with the roots of several legumes such as alfalfa sweet clover sweet pea lentils garden pea broad bean clover bean etc the most common association on fruit is as nodules these nodules are small outgrowths on the roots the microbe frankia also produces nitrogen fixing nodules on the roots of non leguminous plant example alnus both rhizobium and frankia are free living in soil but as symbionts can fix atmospheric nitrogen uproot any one plant of a common pulse just before flowering 
you will see near spherical outgrowths on the root. These are nodules. If you cut them, you will notice that the central portion is red or pink, what makes the nodule pink. This is due to the presence of leguminous hemoglobin or leg hemoglobin. Nodule formation. Nodule formation involves a sequence of multiple interactions between rhizobium and roots of the host plant. Principal stages in the nodule formation are summarized as follows. Rhizobia multiply and colonize the surrounding of the roots and get attached to the epidermal and root hair cells. The root hairs curl and bacteria invade the root hair. An infection thread is produced carrying the bacteria in the cortex of the root where they initiate the nodule formation in the cortex of the root. Then the bacteria are released from the thread into the cells which lead to the differentiation of specialized nitrogen fixing cells. The nodule thirst form establishes a dis direct vascular connection with the host for exchange of nutrients. These events are depicted in figure 12.4. The nodule contains all the necessary biochemical components such as the enzyme nitrogenase and leg hemoglobin. The enzyme nitrogenase is a molybdenum iron protein and catalyzes the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia. The first stable product of nitrogen fixation The reaction is as follows N2 plus 8 electron plus 8 H plus plus 16 ATP gives 2 ammonia plus H2 plus 16 ADP plus 16 inorganic phosphate. The enzyme nitrogenase is highly sensitive to the molecular oxygen. It requires anaerobic conditions. The nodules have adaptations that ensure that the enzyme is protected from oxygen. To protect these enzymes, the nodule contains an oxygen scavenger called leg hemoglobin. It is interesting to note that these microbes live as aerobes under free living condition where nitrogenase is not operational but during nitrogen fixing event they become anaerobic. Thus, protecting the nitrogenase enzyme. You must have noticed that in above reaction, the ammonia synthesis by nitrogenase require a very high input of energy. 8 ATP for each NH3 produced. The energy required thus is obtained from the respiration of the host cell. Fate of ammonia. At physiological pH, the ammonia is protonated to form ammonium ion. While most of the plants can assimilate nitrate as well as ammonium ions, the latter is quite toxic to plants and hence cannot accumulate in them. Let us now see how the ammonium is used to synthesize amino acid in plants. There are two main ways in this in which this can take place. One is reductive amination and second is transamination. Reductive amination, eh, amination. In this process, ammonia reacts with alpha ketoglutaric acid and forms glutamic acid as indicated in the equation given below. Equation alpha ketoglutaric acid plus NH4 plus that is ammonium ion plus NADPH in the presence of glutamate dehydrogenase gives glutamate plus water plus NADP. Transamination It involves the transfer of amino group from one amino acid to the keto group of a keto acid. Glutamic acid is the main amino acid from which the transfer of NH2, the amino group, takes place and the other amino acids are formed through transamination. The enzyme transaminase catalyzes all such reactions. For example, amino donor R, amino donor, the reaction, amino donor, then the amino acceptor, 
reaction is uh, reaction is reversible it gives r1 c double bond o c double bond o o minus plus the keto acid where ammonia gets attached the two most important amides aspergine and glutamine found in plants are a structural part of proteins they are formed from two amino acids namely aspartic acid and glutamic acid respectively by addition of another group to each the hydroxyl part of the acid is replaced by nh2 minus radical since amides contain more nitrogen the then the amino acids they are transported to other parts of the plants via xylem vessels in addition along with transportation stream the nodules of some plants example soya bean export the fixed nitrogen as urease these compounds also have a particularly high nitrogen to carbon ratio thank you